Here are some of the biggest surprises that people have gotten. Number 10, Basement Surprise. A few Ohio State University students found a surprise when they opened a closed door in their basement. The students had a maintenance crew come by for some small fixes they needed done. The maintenance people said they needed access to the ventilation shafts and the students pointed towards the utility closet in the basement. However, when maintenance opened the door, they found more than what they were looking for. They found a bedroom complete with framed photographs and textbooks. Apparently, an unknown roommate had been living there for the past year. His name was Jeremy, and what Jeremy was doing was obviously illegal. The funny thing was one of the residents had met Jeremy earlier a few months back. During the encounter, Jeremy had said that he was wondering when he was going to meet the other new residents of the house. When he was asked if he lived on the first floor, Jeremy just skirted the question. What would you guys do if you found a surprise roommate in the basement? Number 9. What's Between the Wall? Imagine being a happily married couple living in Paris. The year is 1850 and you decide to do some renovations to your new apartment. You go through all the trouble to get the renovation permits and you're ready to get to work. You finally get ready to pull down your living room wall to create an open concept apartment, but as soon as you pull down the wall, something comes tumbling out. When you reach for it and take a good look, you realize that it's a baby. Yes, a baby. This is a true story from a Parisian couple back in 1850. This is how a middle class couple found a mummified baby in their apartment one day. Unfortunately, the couple was put into custody as they were the prime suspects as no one believed their story. However, a scientist who studied forensic entomology, Dr. Marcel Berriguet, performed an autopsy on the baby and found larvae of a flesh fly. He concluded that the baby's body was sealed up in 1848 and that the moths had made their way in 1849, exonerating the couple. It was a pretty significant case that helped recognize forensic entomology as a tool for investigating crime scenes. Number 8. Who's the father? In the first few months of the pregnancy, wombs apparently are like cell parties. That exchange of DNA information is what doctors call chimerism. And this exchange is even wilder when there are two babies involved. This is all cool until you're faced with one of biology's greatest surprises. Here's the usual story. A man and his wife tried to have a baby, but couldn't. After going through fertility treatments and having a son, blood work somehow showed that the man wasn't the father. The couple were angry and about to sue the fertility clinic, but then the clinic then did even more testing. They discovered something impossible. The results showed that the baby was related to the father, but only 10% of his DNA was his. How could this happen? As it turns out, the man had been a twin. However, his twin didn't make it out of the womb and was absorbed, so to speak, by the man, a condition called vanishing twin syndrome. Because the man had absorbed some of his twin's cells in the womb, he effectively became a blend, or chimera, of himself and his brother. The man's previous child's DNA matched his, so pretty much he's technically a dad and an uncle to his kids. Number 7. Treasure Attic in 2015, Dominic Curry was going through stuff in the attic that belonged to his late mother. It's probably a good thing to go through everything because who knows what our parents stash away. Anyways, suddenly, he found a battered suitcase with a few things inside. Among the items was a rolled up painting that turned out to be an unknown painting by Picasso. Apparently, Curry's mother, Annette, met a Russian soldier when she was just 19. They met when Annette was vacationing in Poland where the soldier was stationed. Just like the usual story goes, she returned to Scotland and found out she was pregnant with the soldier's baby. So Annette wrote a letter to him and told him about their baby. He sent her a painting in return, telling her to sell the painting and use the money to support herself and the baby. Is this story too good to be true? Alright, we have our own surprise. That's because it is. The story I just told actually did make headlines in the news as a real story that was found to be a hoax several months later. Apparently, it was Dominic Curry's quote, piece of performance art in order to raise awareness of the struggling artists in Scotland. I'm trying to be as honest as possible. I did a piece of performance art. It's got a lot of media attention because any kind of celebrity gets a lot of attention. What doesn't get attention is the struggling artists in Scotland. 
I'm not sure how this illustrates the struggling artists of Scotland. Maybe Curry just knew that the story was eventually gonna get out. Number six, how much? James Hyatt was only four years old when he and his father decided to go out and about with a new metal detector. They were both very excited when they first tried it out one Sunday afternoon in Hockley, a small village in England. Nothing prepared them for what they would find. After using the metal detector for a little bit, they heard the detector start beeping, and of course, James's father started digging the dirt. He dug six to eight inches down, and lo and behold, he got a flash of gold. They found a 500-year-old gold pendant that's 73% gold. The pendant most likely had the image of the Virgin Mary. Of course, James is still too young to truly understand what exactly they found in the ground, but his father and the person who owned the land certainly aren't. Somehow, this pendant is supposedly worth around two and a half million pounds. The money was split between the Hyatt family and the landowner per the British law. Number five, not one, but two. Wayne Savage, a carpenter who took great pride in his garden. He was one of those people who grew their own veggies in the backyard. One day back in 2011, Wayne was picking in his garden when he found a nylon bag in the bushes. Suspicious, right? When he picked it up and opened it, he found $150,000 stashed inside. Imagine finding that much cash in your garden, especially when you're unemployed like Wayne was. However, no matter how broke he was, Wayne still took it to the police because he thought the money might have been stolen. The police looked around for the cash's original owner and stumbled upon Wayne's neighbor. Supposedly, 87-year-old Dolores Johnson, who had dementia, had decided to throw the money away because the money was cursed. Wayne and Johnson's daughter, who had made a claim on the money for her mother, were supposed to split the money. However, her mother didn't make it before the settlement took place. As for Wayne, unfortunately for him, 10 days before he was set to collect his portion of the money, Wayne passed because of diabetic complications. Maybe Dolores was right after all. Number four, Roman treasure. What are the chances of finding hidden treasure the first time you get your hands on a metal detector after only 20 minutes of using it? The odds are definitely not in your favor, but it has to happen to someone, and that someone happened to be Wesley Carrington in 2013. Carrington was looking for a new hobby and decided to pick up metal detecting. So he drove to the nearest shop and sold metal detectors and bought the most basic one. Carrington then drove to the nearest wooded area to him and turned his detector on. When he first started, he first found a spoon and then a penny, but on his third dig, he found a gold coin. After more digging, he found 55 more. He only stopped because it had gotten too dark to continue. As it turned out, he had found a location with 159 Roman gold coins worth around $156,000. When Carrington took one of the coins for appraisal, the owner of the shop thought it was a stunt, but he still told Carrington to take the coin to the local museum where they confirmed the authenticity of the coins. Carrington's find is believed to be one of the largest collections of Roman gold coins ever found in England. Number three, F is for flea market. Marsha Fuca was at a flea market in West Virginia and somehow hit the jackpot. She bought a painting of Pierre Auguste Renoir for only $7. Yes, you heard that right. Obviously, finding a Renoir in a flea market is quite remarkable. Finding one for seven bucks? Once in a lifetime. Fuqua said she had only bought the painting because she liked the frame and thought she could use it in one of her projects. She actually decided to throw away the painting and just keep the frame. But her mother convinced her to get it checked out. She ended up taking the painting to an art auction house to have an expert look at it. In a trash bag, no less. And Craner, who was on shift at the auction that day, determined that the painting was a real Renoir that could fetch close to $100,000. Awesome, right? But hold up, we're filled with more twists than M. Night Shyamalan today. After some more digging, it was found that the painting was stolen from the Baltimore Museum of Art back in 1951. A federal judge ordered Fuqua to return it to the museum since a property title can't be transferred if ownership results from a theft and the museum had a police report and museum records to back up its claim. How it ended up in West Virginia at a random flea market is anyone's guess. Number two, 80 IKEA bags. In 2014, Kiki Carlin, erotic book author, was exploring a church in southern Sweden for inspiration. She was writing an erotic book on Vikings because why not? 
Since Sweden has a very strong Viking history, I guess she thought a Swedish church should help with some good storylines? Anyways, Carlin was investigating the ruins in the church when she stumbled upon several IKEA bags filled to the top with bones. Human bones. She immediately started investigating, but the police didn't let her go too far. They quickly took over and found out what had happened. The bones belonged to at least 80 people who were once buried on the church grounds. In 2009, the church needed renovations and that's when they discovered and dug the bones. A team of specialists were called in to document the bones and rebury them, but somehow they never got to that last part. Ludwig Pampai Dufay, the archaeologist who was part of the excavation, said that the bones may be as old as 500 years old. He was also putting the bones in IKEA bags wasn't his idea. Who cares whose idea it was, whose fault it was, if that bones didn't get buried? Number one, a theater where? Paris is famous for its catacombs, a series of underground tunnels run underneath the city. It's a labyrinth down there. And that's why only a little corner of the catacombs is open to the public. But that doesn't mean no one ever explores the corners without permission. Police are responsible for monitoring the 170 miles of tunnels, caves, galleries, and catacombs. One day they stumbled on an amazing discovery during a training exercise. They found a movie theater with 20 seats, a fully stocked bar, and an informal restaurant. The complex ran off of a professionally installed electricity system and there were at least three phone lines installed. The police decided to leave and come back later to gather evidence. Three days later, when the police returned, accompanied by experts from the French Electricity Board to see where the power was coming from, the phone and electricity lines had been cut and a note was lying in the middle of the floor. It said, do not try to find us. It wasn't until years later that it was discovered that the complex was the work of a secret underground art organization called Les Ui, which had more than 100 members split into more than 10 teams. The organization improves hidden corners of Paris. Their works have included restoring the Pantheon clock and medieval crypts, in addition to building that little complex. Not gonna lie, sounds like a pretty cool organization to be a part of. Here's what's next old ammo box, and when he opened it, cha-ching, it was filled with cash money. There were coins, too. In total, he stumbled upon a treasure of about $1,000. Or so he thought. He was so excited that he locked the box in the trunk of his car and told his wife about the discovery. Upon further investigation...